Hello everyone, this is Dr. Priyashri Mukherjee, pediatrician and pediatric hematologist. So uh, today and welcome to an academy platform, let's crack, crack it. Uh, today our topic of discussion will be the important syndromes in pediatrics uh, part 2. So this is the continuation of the previous uh, yesterday's lecture where I discussed some of the common syndromes in pediatrics. So we had a good discussion on Down syndrome, Turner syndrome, um, um, different types of uh, genomic imprinting syndromes. We had discussion on Prat de Villi um, uh, and many more syndromes. So what I would advise you is after this, after listening to this particular lecture, you can again go go back tomorrow uh, uh, go back and go through the lecture which I had taken yesterday so that will in total complete you know 90% bulk of the major symptoms or syndromes which has uh, which are important to know from the uh, exams point of view rest if uh, the systemic syndro uh, syndromes which are like uh, specific to particular uh, systems like respiratory system GIT those syndromes will be discussed in those respective topics so before but these are the in general uh, uh, syndromes which is like a, a must must kind of a, uh, a must know kind of a lecture okay now coming to the important part so what we are going to do today or focus mostly today is on the head and neck syndrome okay it is very very important and uh, believe me after this half an hour section i mean syndromes you'll be much more confident when we are talking about syndromes so there are uh, classification of craniofacial deformities which has been given by the American Cleft Palate Association. So the features that are included in this of are the cleft synostosis, uh, atrophy, hypoplasia, uh, neoplasia and unclassified. Okay. Now coming to the next section that is what are the main syndromes which are associated with cleft lip and cleft palate so what i would advise you you should know the names of each and every syndrome out of this i would tell you that the first two syndromes are extremely important from exam point of view so the first syndrome is the pierre robin syndrome then comes the treacher collins syndrome there is Nager acrofacial disastosis which is similar to uh, treacher collin syndrome but the difference is they have a gross acro and facial the uh, the upper limb, the limbs and the especially the hand portion and the facial uh, deformities then comes the golden hair syndrome the Mobius syndrome and the holloman Street syndrome but out of this we concentrate only on the pierre robin syndrome and treacher collin syndrome so coming to the next so before I begin explaining you about or reading the uh, features of Pear Robin syndrome, I just want you to see the images very carefully. So you can see I've given you three pictures over here. The first picture is a baby who has got a very uh, uh, typical bird-like faces and he has got a tracheostomy done, correct? Now look at the second picture. You can see there is a significant Retrognathia over here, correct? So the chin is retracted. So this is a typical feature of Pear Robin syndrome, and this is typically a V-shaped cleft palate. In some cases, you can also find a U-shaped cleft palate. Okay. So now just see them carefully. Uh, now coming to the uh, the triad of Pear Robin syndrome. So, what is the main important triads? These are the three important clinical features that is the cleft palate, the glossoptosis, and the retrognathia. Now, what is glossoptosis? The falling of the tongue on the back side because of the tone and no support of the palate. The tongue often falls to the back side. So, glossoptosis and retrognathia, which you already saw. Okay, now the other features which are seen are micrognathia. Remember, macroglossia and ankyloglossia are uncommon. The cardiac abnormalities include pulmonary stenosis and patent ductus arteriosus. Eyes and ears will include cataract with isotropia, glaucoma, microphthalmia, deformed pinna, and deafness. Okay, so you can see here. Uh, the child has got a bit of low set ears, right? It's 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 below the level of the line which is 
passing through the outer canthus okay now coming to the etiology the etiology see many etiologies has been framed till date but the most important and the most reliable etiology for the pear robin syndrome is this that is there is a poor development of the jaw at about the 6th to 11th week of fetal life so this is the most common um uh, uh, etiology and i would be happy if you remember this only as far as pear robin syndrome is concerned okay now uh, pear robin syndrome is also called as a pear robin sequence because there are many other associated syndromes uh, which are similar uh, to uh, pear robin syndrome one of them is the stickler syndrome okay and the second is the velocardiofacial syndrome or the catch 22 syndrome also called as the d jaw syndrome now this velocardiofacial syndrome i have already discussed yesterday in great details so you can go back and listen to that youtube uh, uh session and uh, uh, you will see that so many interesting things we had discussed yesterday and this is just a continuation of that so coming to the stickler syndrome so it is a type of the uh, pear robin sequence okay so what we see here is the eye problems where there is severe nearsightedness there is cataracts glaucoma and retinal detachments okay so this is typical for stickler syndrome please remember this these patients also have the hearing difficulties that is the extent of hearing loss varies amongst the people who have stickler syndrome it usually affects the ability to hear the high frequencies okay now coming to the bone and joint abnormalities they have this mild epiphyseal dysplasia children who have stickler syndrome often have over flexible joints and are more likely to develop abnormal curvatures of the spine like such as coliosis osteoarthritis can begin in adolescence okay i'll just see the uh, the uh, presentation of the stickler syndrome and then i'll show you the images okay so this is a typical picture of stickler syndrome see they are also having the typical features of pear robin that is they have this element of retrognathia they have a very flattened nose correct so just have a good look in addition to this they will have even they have low set ears Now coming to treasure calling syndrome. So what is the etiology of treasure calling syndrome? The commonest etiology is the abnormal development of the first and the second brinkle arches. Please remember this. It is very important. Embryology, you should be very thorough with embryology from two aspects. First is anatomy and second is pediatrics. Okay. Many of the syndromes, many of the congenital anomalies are associated with embryology. Okay, now uh, this is a typically autosomal dominant condition, and you see it in one case in fifty thousand live births. Okay, even these uh, patients have typical pear robin like faces. That is a fish like or bird like faces the orbit is egg shaped and its base is located superomedially please remember this this is an mcq point okay so uh, the base is located superomedially and its axis is oriented inferolaterally the hypoplastic or absent zygoma is the most characteristic finding which is the main event or the central event of treacher collins syndrome the maxilla is protrusive and over projected now the man mandible is micropnathic with reduced ramus and low and the body length now just uh, read this finding carefully then i'll show you the image okay In addition to these, they also have colobomas and pseudo colobomas of the lower lid, uh, uh, and then they have the the cheeks and the temporal regions. They frequently have long and tongue-shaped side burns that are often anteriorly displaced and extend into the preauricular regions. Okay, the external ear, the external auditory canal, and the tympanic membrane and middle ear space. They also have symmetric 
abnormalities. It is a non-curable condition. Only supportive care is the best modality. The life ex expectancy is generally normal. And yes, the most important is the advanced paternal age is supposed to be the risk factor for treacher Collins syndrome. So this is also high yield point for you. Now see, these are some of the beautiful interesting faces of treacher Collins syndrome. So image based questions are very 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 common as far as uh, NEET and AIMS exams are concerned. So it's a digital era. Exams are happening on computers. It's very easy to give images and you get very good ideas about the images. See the typical faces, the typical smile, right? The flattened base of the nose. So this is typical for Treacher Collins syndrome. Okay. Now going ahead, next is the interesting uh, syndrome that is Cruzon syndrome. It is also autosomal dominant condition. 50% are cases occur due to spontaneous mutation, complete penetrance and there is a variable expressivity. So the mutation mostly is at the level of FGFR2 gene, okay, which is nothing else but fibroblast growth factor receptor gene. There are no syntactile or cervical fusion and these children have normal intelligence. Vision is a major issue in such patients, okay. Now coming to the clinical features of a Cruzon syndrome, I can, I'm showing you this is one image of a child who has a typical Cruzon syndrome. Look at the extent of exophthalmus, okay. This is a grown up lady with Cruzon syndrome so they have the first sign is is the protrusion of the eyes that is proptosis okay now the second is they have issues with the fusion of the skull bones that is craniosynostosis next is dental abnormalities they have crowding and abnormally positioned teeth they have a beaten copper appearance of skull in radiograph there is a mid phase hypoplasia there is high arch palate, elevated intracranial pressure, there is a bulging anterior fontanel, hearing loss, vision loss. Most of them do not have any intellectual disability. Please remember they are absolutely normal in intelligence. Okay. So these are the typical features of Prozon syndrome. Prozon is again a very interesting syndrome so you should know this very well. Especially the mutation and the clinical presentations. Okay. The next is a variant of Cruzon syndrome that is Apert syndrome which is also called as acrocephalosyndactyly. Now if you see the images first you can see the level of syndactyly which is present. So they have similar clinical features just like uh, Cruzon syndrome except for the presence of these uh, limb abnormalities. They will also have brachycephaly that is shortened anterior posterior diameter. They will have a hypoplastic midface, hypertellurism and proptosis. Uh, common radiologic findings include imp impacted teeth, delayed and ectopic eruption with supernumerary teeth and calcification of the styroid process. They are distinguished from cruzon if the patient presents with neurological deficits, syndactyly and fusion of cervical vertebrae. That's why in cruzon syndrome, I have recurrently been telling that they are neurologically or intellectually normal, whereas ca cases of Apert syndrome, which is a differential diagnosis of cruzon syndrome, they look similar. They have similar presentation, but the only fact over here is they are neurolo they have neurological deficits and syntactyly and there's fusion of the cervical vertebrae. Okay. So this is the complete feature of uh, Apert syndrome. You can see the malformations of the ham, the webbing of the uh, fingers, right? Asymmetric, uh, there's a symmetric syndactyly, like these two both hands, there's a symmetric syndactyly. You can make out the third and the fourth digits, they have got the problem. Here also the third and the fourth digits have got the problem, right? And look wise, if you see, they are looking similar to Crisson syndrome, even this child has got proptosis, malformed ears, okay? 
plus cranial synostosis is also quite obvious from uh, the uh, essential features of most of the syndromes okay i'll just go through it quickly the first apoid or cruzone we saw that they have cranial synostosis severe syndactyly of hand and feet and downturn mouth with hypertelorism it is a autosomal dominant condition okay then coming to seizure crossden syndrome this is also like these are all the syndromes which are related to cranial synostosis so you should know the names and the uh, clinical feature which uh, differentiates it from the other okay so even uh, seizure crossden syndrome has cranial synostosis they will also have facial asymmetry with low hairline proptosis deviated nasal septum syndactyly of second and third fingers so this is also autosomal dominant condition pfeffer syndrome is also with cranial synostosis with malformed enlarged thumb and great toe soft tissue syndactyly of second and third digits with normal intelligence okay so they are also autosomal dominant condition cruzon craniofacial dysostosis i will not just repeat it but uh, quickly if you see that they also have um, cranial synostosis with shallow orbits that causes proptosis uvulan cleft palate this is also autosomal dominant now coming to the lowry disease this is cranial synostosis with fibular aplasia this is one condition which is autosomal recessive okay the next is jackson wheeze which is cranial synostosis with mid phase hypoplasia with mild dactyly of feet and broad based toes uh, this is autosomal dominant and the last most important is carpenter syndrome which has caused oxy which has oxycephaly with mild syndactyly of the fingers preaxial polydactyly of feet and hypogenitalism obesity and congenital heart diseases so these two conditions are autosomal recessive so one is lowry's disease and the carpenter both are autosomal recessive less more rest most of the syndromes associated with cranial synostosis are autosomal dominant okay and out of that we have already discussed two very important and commonly asked um, uh, syndrome of cranial synostosis that is the apert syndrome and the cruzen syndrome okay so just look at this pfeffer syndrome how they look so the typical over here is there is ocular proptosis see the extent of the ocular proptosis don't get confused with uh, cruzon's or um, uh, apert syndrome they won't have proptosis to this extent okay and probable webbing of the hands and feet very classical and typical picture this is see the colon syndrome if you see this child has a high element of cranial synostosis okay there is a low frontal hairline very typical there are droopy eyelids or tosses you can say the eyes are widely spaced the uh, bridge of the nose is broad there is a facial asymmetry okay you can make out the face is asymmetric and they will have unusually uh, unusual shaped ears okay they are they have got this global developmental delay that is motor milestones are grossly delayed they have this learning difficulties also and in some cases then you might find that there is normal intellectual level as well now coming to the next very important uh, syndrome is weidman beckwith syndrome okay so it is a disorder of the growth regulation exhibiting somatic uh, somatic overgrowth and a predisposition to embryonal tumors okay so now if you are going to the plus platform i have got uh, my course one published where i had taken a chapter on growth and development where we had discussed about weidman beckwith syndrome and how frequently it can occur and everything and how important it is as far as growth and development is concerned so okay it was one important component of that lecture so i would advise you if you are taking the plus prescription uh, then please uh, subscription then please go and listen to that lecture of mine it will be definitely very much helpful so if you see i'll just continue with the section now uh, if you see the clinical presentation there is microcephaly with macroglossia omphalocele hypoglycemia renomegaly and hepatomegaly and splenomegaly okay 
now see this uh, the most common etiology is alterations that dysregulate the imprinted gene on chromosome 11. I will not advise you to remember the locus as well, but at least remember the number, the chromosome number, uh, which is important from MCQ point of view. If you see the, this backward Weidman syndrome has got a varied presentations, starting from abnormal facies to macroglossia to uh, gross omphalocenes, right? So the major finding in this backward Weidman syndrome is abdominal wall defects causing internal organs to push themselves out of the belly button and they have a large size tongue and abnormally large body at birth. You can see this level of omphalocene, the whole intestine has come out. Okay, this is one more picture of an omphalocene, a huge omphalocene indeed. This is macroclostia, a typical feature. This is a small infant and he has got a huge tongue. See this child with macroglossia. Okay, see this is a newborn with a huge tongue. It's so huge that it's outside the body or outside the mouth. Okay, then coming to the minor features, these include the creases of the ear lobe. Okay, you can see the abnormal creases of the ear lobes. Uh, blood vessels defects such as port wine stain. So this child has got a port wine stain, often seen as a red birthmark with hypoglycemia, renomegaly, and asymmetrical body. They will have large eyes, undescended testes, microcephaly, hepatomegaly, splenomegaly. They are lethargic and they often have convulsions. Okay. So this is all about beckwith Weidman syndrome. Coming to the next most important syndrome, that is the Marfan syndrome. So um, this I would advise you to remember from MCQ point of view because uh, uh, Marfan syndrome is related to the musculoskeletal as well and the most common syndrome frequently asked uh, syndrome. So if you see the incidence is 1 in 10,000 like births. Okay, it is mostly autosomal dominant condition with high penetrance but variable expression. They are associated with abnormal production, matrix deposition and unstability of fibrinin A. So this is important, you have to remember this. The fibrillin uh, 1 locus resides on the long arm of chromosome 15. Okay. Going to the clinical manifestation, I've got uh, some interesting images of Marfan syndrome as well. So the skeletal system will have a, there is abnormality of the, you, you might have, uh, by now you know that Marfan syndrome, they are all, uh, all huge long patients, right? And with the abnormal upper segment and lower segment ratio, their arm span is huge. Okay, you often take the arm span of tall people while you are taking cases and anthropometry in some of the cases. Okay, then coming uh, to the abnormal spans uh, or abnormal upper segment and lower segment ratio. So we know the normal ratios, but when do we consider them abnormal? If the age between 0 to 5 years, the ratio is less than 1. 6 to 7 years ratio less than 0 0.95, 8 to 9 years ratio less than 0 0.9 and last 10 years is less than 0, 10 years and above will be less than 0 0.85. Okay, so these are the uh, red flags for abnormal upper segment is to lower segment ratio. Okay, like we have red flags for each and every uh, aspects like growth and development. Okay, now the most important presentation uh, after this upper segment and lower segment abnormality and a high M span, uh, the next abnormality is the chest wall abnormality. Okay, they have this excessive uh, rib growth, they, uh, thereby the, the sternum is pushed out which is called as pectus carinatum or sometimes they, the sternum will be pushed in or pulled in which we call it as pectus excavatum so uh, then they have thoracolumbar scoliosis because of this gross um, spinal and chest wall abnormality such patients are more so vulnerable to develop spontaneous pneumothorax okay then coming to the next set of clinical presentation of Marfan syndrome they have this inward bulging of acetabulum into the pelvic cavity which is also called as protrusion acetabuli okay 
they have flat fit then uh, the scientific name for flat fit is plus planus okay it, it's p l a n u s i missed out a then there is joint hyper mobility okay or joint contractures there are long and slender fingers in relation to the palm of the hands that is called as arachnodactyly long fingers a uh, picture is coming up next the contractures of the fingers are there which is also called as campylodactyly now uh, see the i want you all to remember the scientific names because when if suppose they are framing a, a mcq on marfan syndrome and if it is on the clinical features they can just put on the scientific name so you are supposed to know what is arachnodactyly what is pes planus what is uh, protrusion acetabular what exactly happens in that what is campylodactyly so that's why i've mentioned it in this slide so just dot it down in your books then next what we have is dolichocephaly that you are very well aware of there are deep set eyes which is called as anophthalmus these patients often have retrognathia and macrognathia there is a malar hypoplasia that is flattening of the mid face they have they have this high arch palate and down slanting palpable fissure now uh, just to uh, find out the uh, test for arachnodactyly and hypermobility we have two test right one is the walker mudok sign you can see in the picture what they have done is uh, the, the, the just uh, there is a full overlap of the distal phalanges of the thumb and the fifth finger when wrapped over the contralateral wrist right so this is a typical sign which is showing arachnodactyly and hypermobile joints okay see long finger so this is typically arachnodactyly see how flexible it is if you try to move your wrist itna nahi move hota hai right after a certain point it just stops but if you can see his wrist is almost getting uh twisted to a very acute angle in a normal case it doesn't get twisted to that extent okay so this is hyper mobile joints the next test is the steinberg sign also called as a thumb sign but the distal phalanx of the thumb fully extends beyond the ulnar border of the hand when folded across the palm so if we are folding the palm it barely crosses the midline or just crosses the midline okay but in case of a marfan syndrome it will the thumb will extend beyond the ulnar border of the hand okay now see this in this picture can you see can you make out the thumb um uh, i don't know whether i'll be able to zoom in or not but if you see the thumb is coming out see now here you can make out right and here also the thumb has come out so these are the two signs so first is the walker mudok sign and the second is the steinberg sign please have a good note of this you are supposed to know the names of the signs okay now this is like a total uh, presentation of the marfan syndrome so to begin with they have this eye problems then they have the long arms and fingers abnormal chest heart and lung problems they have a very short torso okay you can see the disproportionately long legs arms toes and fingers you can see extremely tall and slender build they have a long and narrow face they have eye arched neck and crowded teeth uh, intending or protruding sternum we saw that also they have high pressure in the eye cystic changes in the lungs flexible joints flat feet curved spine and abnormal heart sounds i will not stick up here because we have already discussed most of them now coming to the cardiovascular manifestation of marfan syndrome so this is as per the gains criteria there is dilatation of the aortic root most commonly involving the aortic sinuses progressive aortic sinus enlargement are, uh, can lead to the aortic aneurysm and associated aortic dissection now what is happening dilatation and di dissection of the descending aortic uh, thoracic aorta is happening then there is a mild mitral valve prolapse with or without mitral regurgitation then next is there is aortic valve regurgitation due to annular dilatation 
The third is the prolapse of the tricuspid and the pulmonary valves. And then there is pulmonary artery dilatation in the absence of the pulmonary valve stenosis. There is increased rate of coronary artery dissection, increased incidence of atrial septal aneurysm, and last is left ventricular dilatation and dysfunction with and without valve lesions. Okay, so I will just flash this for some time, see what all the other presentation. The first, we will just revise it. There is dilatation of the aortic root. Okay, then there is what is happening? Then there is progressive aortic sinus enlargement. And then this is causing aortic aneurysm through dissection. The next is the descending thoracic aorta is also getting affected. There is dilatation and dissection. There is a MVP. There is aortic wall regurgitation. There is, trans, uh, there is prolapse of the tricuspid and the pulmonary walls. There is pulmonary artery dilatation. Okay, because of the absence of the pulmonary wall stenosis. There is increased rate of coronary artery dissection. There is atrial septal aneurysm. And finally, there is left ventricular dilatation and dysfunction with or without valve lesions. Okay, clear? So now that you have grasped this, coming to the ocular manifestation of um, uh, Marfan syndrome, this is dislocation of the ocular lens here and severe myopia. There is flat cornea, there is increased axial length of the globe, there is hypoplastic uh, iris, there is ciliary muscle hypoplasia and increased meiosis. Okay, uh, let me see if I can uh, show you the... picture of the ophthalmic manifestations of uh, no that will be a bit difficult so uh, no it's not there actually they typically have that uh, ectopia lentis figure picture so that was a very typical picture i'll just check out if i have it then i can flash it but i i couldn't find it right away uh, but it's freely available on net you can have the look of the typical ectopia lentus picture of uh, marfan syndrome uh, the other systems include uh, spontaneous pneumothorax i've already told you why they have the spontaneous pneumothorax correct then the skin findings they will have this pinkish scar like lesions okay just like stretch marks okay they will have this uh, scar like lesions which will uh, uh, which later uh, becomes white okay just like stria atrophic so uh, just they look very much similar to the stretch marks they have this congenital or acquired inguinal hernia and they often uh, fall prey to this lumbar or back pain because of the widening of the dura sac and a uh, and the root sleeves okay so that is called as dural astasia. So these are the typical other system findings as far as Marfan syndrome is concerned. So we saw the major skeletal abnormalities, we saw the cardiac abnormalities, we saw the ophthalmic abnormalities and the other systems which are typically affected in Marfan syndrome. Now with this, I believe that whatever question is being asked on Marfan syndrome, especially the clinical, um, then that is inferior the lens is dislocated inferiorly i had that beautiful picture of marfan syndrome uh, ectopia lentus i don't know why but um, in my next lecture just uh, remind me to show that um, ectopia lentus picture it's a beautiful typical picture i got it from the ophthalm department of my hospital Okay, this is the last slide of my presentation today. The diagnostic criteria for Marfan syndrome. Very, very, very important. Uh, very high yield point for the MCQ point of view. Okay. So, if you see this. Uh, they, uh, the, it is of two criteria that is first is the absence of any uh, family history of Marfan syndrome and the next is the presence of family history. So if you see the aortic dilatation of this uh, Z score is uh, more than 2 and plus there is ectopia lentus. Okay. 
Second criteria is if there is a aortic dilatation with risk score of more than 2 and fibrillin 1 mutation. The third is if there is aortic dilatation and systemic score which is more than 7 points. I will not advise you to go to the details of the systemic score. Okay. But uh, uh, just uh, one thing. The systemic score includes all the clinical features which we had already discussed okay previously so just remember the GENS criteria that is the diagnostic criteria for Marfan syndrome which is more important and uh, the criteria which are important the first criteria was like all of them have this aortic dilatation but first one was ectopia lentis the second one was fibrillin 1 gene mutation the second third one was the systemic score more than seven then th uh, fourth one is ectopia lentis and uh, fibrillin 1 gene mutation with known aortic dilatation okay so these are all under Marfan syndrome so and if there is a presence of the family history of Marfan syndrome then the criteria are even if the patient has got a ectopia lentis that's more than enough for us then systemic score more than 7 even if there is no aortic dilatation then also they will be classified under Marfan syndrome and if there is an aortic dilatation that is a Z score more than 2 for patients for more than 20 years of age and more than 3 for those who are younger than 20 years of age plus family history then that is Marfan syndrome so here it's like an individualized presentation and here it's a combination of aortic dilatation with a, a either of the findings of Marfan syndrome I hope this uh, is very clear okay so uh, this is the last section of my presentation so now just a brief introduction to the now that uh, that you are already into the YouTube section of an academy so in an academy there are many more educators who have um, descriptive lectures MCQ based lectures on the uh, an academy plus platform we also have special sessions so what i would advise you is first you download the app of an academy go through the special sessions see uh, we have two patterns of teaching we can teach you as like theoretical discussion like we had today and yesterday and uh, as and when exams come we start giving you the mcq based questions and more and more practice okay so that is our approach because our target is let's crack it now that we have the mid-year exams so um, uh, so this is the best way you can prepare yourself because we come up with all the essential high yield points which are important so you see in today's lecture whatever points are important for you to know uh, is all all illustrated over here along with the diagrams and everything so uh, I, I have got this ongoing course on uh, genetic disorders and inborn errors of metabolism the course has been published the pdf is very much available in the platform it's it's a part of the foundation course itself so uh, go through my these lectures they are very very informative and plus i have inculcated the essential mcqs also which were asked in the previous years related to genetics and inborn errors of metabolism and pediatrics because both the topics are very difficult it's difficult to remember them and uh, but how to remember it how to grasp it has been very well discussed in these sessions so do uh, come on plus platform do get um, uh, yourself subscribed and just enjoy the um, the way the teachers are teaching and so th this is about the uh, payment system I mean the more you get into the uh, billing section you will understand by yourself as a teacher uh, I cannot explain much about this but I will always be more encouraging if you need any help do let me know follow me on um, uh, on the uh, app an academy app my name is Dr. Priyashri Mukherjee and uh, if at all you are uh, uh, planning to subscribe let me tell you my uh, youtube code it's dr priyashri dash yt okay so this is my youtube code uh, you can use this youtube code and you can avail 10 percent discount which is a, actually a very good deal um and thank you for being very patient and listening to the whole section i hope you enjoyed it and i hope it was informative for you 
I mean, I could definitely, uh, you must be knowing most of them, but I could uh, just add even a bit to your knowledge. That would be of great help uh, for both of us. Do give me the feedback. Do give me the messages. Do give uh, in my message section so that I come to know that what additional points you want to know, what more syndromes you want to know, what else you want me to take in the YouTube section. I can definitely come up with more innovative lectures. And uh, this is also this lecture also i had made after a feedback from one of my students who told that i need a, a, a lecture on syndrome then i told her that half an hour covering syndrome is a bit difficult i need one hour whole so this is the way i had split the hours so part one was taken yesterday do listen to that section and part two is being discussed today so uh, thank you very much and have a very good day See you on an academy platform and don't forget to drop a message. Thank you very much. Bye.